Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Now in reverence to the Word of God, I'd like to invite those who can't to, kneel, to stand up. I'm going to read the Bible on Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah, Old Testament. Thus says the word of our God. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was brushed for our iniquities. The chastis chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of the. the praise and now we ask that you bless us through the message we pray in the name of Jesus the church may be seated we just sang a couple of songs and the song the songs they spoke about gratitude because Lord we made us and we made us well you made us well and we've if we observed the lyrics of the song that the children just sang, it says that the Lord came down to save us and to take us to the eternity. And the last song that we just sang speaks about the meeting between the sinner and the Savior and says the following, I have found a great love that heals my pain and heals my my wounds and bring comfort to life. My hope is that as we leave the service that you may live with the knowledge that tonight there was a meeting between you and the Lord. But the Lord brought you here tonight so that you could have a meeting with you, with me, each one of us here. Because the Lord knows your pain. He knows your need, your infirmities. And that's why you are here tonight. Because the Lord wants to take away and to deliver from all of them. And the verses that we just read, I have been meditating on it throughout the day. How many times? Isaiah 53 has been preached. Throughout the world, everybody has the knowledge of what I'm going to say tonight, which is nothing new. And observing the first verse of this chapter, Three, it says the following Who has believed our report? There's more than 2,000, almost 3,000 years that it was written. The book of Isaiah 53, the chapter Isaiah 53 was written about 600 years uh, before Christ, so about 207, 2,700 years that the world has knowledge of this text that we just read. And the question is the following. Who has believed our report, our preaching? For 2,700 years, the preaching is the same. And the question is, who has believed our report? And when we take the churches of uh, Revelations, and that's the theme of the year, what is it? Who has an ear? Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now I'm going to ask you, who has an ear? 
everybody here. But who has given heed to what their ears are listening, to what the Holy Spirit has dictated, has said, has revealed to the church? That's the question. And the question of the Holy Spirit is, who has believed our report? Who is giving heed to what is being preached? We are frequently saying that Jesus is coming. Jesus is returning. That only Jesus saves. If you believe, you will be saved, you and your household. So then why people are not saved? It's about 2,700 year, years, it, everybody should have been already been saved. So this is the question. Who, so who has believed our report? And the second question is, at to whom the arm of the Lord been revealed? So this is easy to answer. The first, only you can answer. I have, belie have I believed the preaching? But the second one, everybody can answer. To four, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And what is what is the arm of the Lord? What is the meaning of this? When you read Isaiah, it says, and the arm of the Lord is like a, a root of the dry ground. He is no. He has one from our. Comp comp the arm of the Lord is the one that uh, the men hide their face to against. The arm of the Lord is the one that has been despised. Who is the arm of the Lord? Jesus is the arm of the Lord. The arm is related to, to the work, to the labor. So Jesus, he came here to exact an order a project a job work and this work is in favor of my and your yours and our lives but man has rejected this man has despised Jesus when man looks to Jesus he even hides his face and turns his eyes away that's why man is sick, and that's why man is wounded, and that's why man is condemned, because he has despised and rejected God's arm. So here the Lord says the following, this one has been despised, this one that is considered unworthy. This one that has no appearance and beauty, this the one that you do not believe in or don't want to believe in. This one exactly is the one that want to take upon himself our sickness. This is the one exactly that want to take upon himself, like the word says, our transgressions. Well, what is a transgression? Transgress is to break the law. Transgress is to disobey. Transgress is to sin. And here the word says that our trans he took our transgressions. So there is no man at all that has not transgressed, transgressed God's laws. There is no man here that has not sin because we have all been have all sinned and have been destituted from God's grace we have been born in sin but we have the choice of not dying in it and Jesus is giving to you this choice the choice of not dying in sin and the word says the following but he was wounded for our transgressions so my, my sin, your sin, has wounded 
what is to wound, is to hurt, oppress. What we do, wound, harms the Lord. It hurts the Lord. Bring pain and suffering to the Lord. So what we give to the Lord, pain and suffering. And you know what he gives to us? Peace, healing. We gave him hatred and he returns love. We give to him our infirmity and gives healing to our infirmities. He took upon himself our infirmities. And what is interesting is that he does not even ask for it. He just takes. It is his action. You have wounded it. I have wounded me. You have sinned against me. You have oppressed me. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to condemn you. Condemn you. I'm going to take from you. I'm going to remove from the life of each one of you your transgressions. What a wonderful God is in is in him. The God that removes, takes away from us our, our transgressions and throws it on the sea of forgetfulness. And he says the following. He was bruised for our iniquities. And when we look at the Word of God, we're going to see many alerts regarding iniquity. And what is iniquity? It's illegality. It's immorality. It is what is reproachable. It's a rebellion against God. It's an impurity. It's a rejection. Perversion. Deprivation. Depravity. So it's not only sin, but it's also the sin of immorality. It's transgression and immorality. And because of those things, the world was condemned. And Lord Jesus speaks about this in Matthew 7, 23, says that iniquity pushes men away from God. In Matthew 3, 41, he says the following, I'm going to take from my kingdom all the ones who, who practice iniquity. And afterwards, on chapter 24, 12, he says, because iniquity has multiplied, the love of many are go is going to go grow colder. And the Lord did that. When we look on the text, it is in the past tense. He took upon himself our transgressions and was uh, bruised by our, for our iniquities. So when you came here, and even before you arrived, the Lord has already, had already provided the resource to take away your transgression, my transgression, yours and mine my iniquity and that's why it's written like this the chastisement for our peace was upon him so we chastised him chastised him that's who was wounded and oppressed this is our fault this is humanity's fault but this chastisement he was suffered for me and for you he did it to bring us Peace. And what is peace? It's comfort, refreshing, relief. When you're sentenced, sentenced to death, you have no peace. When you are ill, you have no peace. When you are un under condemnation or judgment, you have no peace. But then Jesus says the following, I'll give you my peace, I give you. No, don't give it like the world gives. In the world, in the 
that means sin and iniquity, you will have affliction. But in my presence, you will have peace. That's why we greet one another with the peace of the Lord. He was chastised for, he was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. What is stripe? Who has worked with uh, animals like, uh, like donkeys and horses? When you put too much load on them, you cause a bruise. It is the excess of weight. You may hurt them because because of that. And the Lord, He took away our transgression. It was a great load upon Him. He causes stripes and was a source of extreme suffering. And when we read the Word of God, we're going to read about it. But His stripes what he has done because of he has done this he brought healing to us that's the reason why we are here gathered tonight so that we can have gratitude to the Lord for what he has done on our behalf and to our benefit in the word my brother says the following because he put out his soul unto death because Jesus when he was wounded he was so was put out into death. When we look at Jesus' history and his sacrifice, we're going to see that a soldier pierced Jesus on his side and water and blood came out from that piercing. And the, the Bible says, because the life of the flesh is in blood and I have given you upon the altar to to atone for your sin because the blood is going to atone your sin so when Jesus pours out his soul and his blood he atones for yours for mine for our sins and what does that mean to atone for mine for yours for our sins it is because through the blood of Jesus we have been made righteous through God and we have access to his presence and we can enjoy of this promise that the Lord has made to us in the house of, of our Lord is there are many dwellings and we turn because wherever you are I shall be there that's the project we cannot reject the project we cannot despise the project we need to understand this project and love this project because it is it is in this project my brother and sister that you will be saved, that you'll be rescued, that your life will be restored. It is through this project that you will find a place in heaven. You have a dwelling in eternity. That's the project. That's this Jesus. This is the one that has been rejected by man, but he is the one that exactly came to save you, to deliver you, and to bring comfort to your soul. Amen. Let's sing a song.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord has shown tonight, uh, sister, she has come in the service every now and then, and she she came here seeking a healing to an infirmity that she has. The Lord has shown even the place where she has the infirmity. She has a breathing problem in her lungs. And a while ago, a long while ago, she has received a gift from someone. A box. Very beautiful. Uh, like a pencil. And a small furniture. Small furniture in your bedroom. So this so you know that it is with you that the Lord is speaking. The Lord was showing that every time that she goes there, clean up her bedroom and clean up, and she takes, picks up that gift, and she likes that gift very much, and the person has given it to her. The Lord was showing that the angel, today when she came home, the angel was ready waiting for her at the door. Actually, when she came here to the church, the angel was waiting for her at the door of the church, and she entered beside him. In the process of the service, the Lord was uh, speaking with her that the infirmity, the healing for that infirmity, only depended on her. What does that mean? So it is only dependent on me, then I want to be healed, right? It only depends on you Take an action. You need to understand, my sister, that the only one that can take away your sin, your infirmity is the Lord. He wants to take away. He wants to heal you. And more than this, He wants to save your soul. But you need to take an action. You need to make a choice. That little gift that you have received is not going to resolve your problem. No, Jesus, He resolved all your problems. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. Believe in Jesus, you'll be healed. Believe in Jesus, you'll be transformed. Believe in Jesus that you're going to be taken to heaven, to a new heaven, to a new earth, to eternity. And that's what you need to believe, what you need to believe in. If you believe, you'll be saved. The Lord also has shown a woman, and this woman, she has received a proposal of changing completely her life as a change in, in appearance, in inside and out, a radical change. Let's say, let's put it like that. But this has harmed God's project in her life. This woman, she has realized the situation where she is, and she's now trying to uh, go back on this project that has begun by her. There is a way, and the way is Jesus. Sometimes you go to a place, and people say, hey, you need to change your appearance, you need to change your life, you need to do this and that. In order to, for you to be successful, to be victorious, to be this and that, to make money, to become famous, to be happy. Isn't it true? Is there anything better than that? But what is worth a man gaining the entire world but losing his soul? The matter here is about the soul. Jesus poured out his soul. Not to save your soul. Your soul is more important than any value here on earth. Everything that exists in this life. Remember this. The Lord is concerned about your soul. You want to be happy, you want to be victorious. Accept Jesus. Seek God's kingdom and His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. If He doesn't add, no problem. We're going to have a new heaven, a new earth, have an eternity prepared to each one of us. Whoever, who, 
offered this type of things for us is not the Lord. When Jesus was baptized, he was taken to the desert. And there in the desert, he received a proposal. What was it? I'm going to put on the temp high post in the temple. I'm going to give you all the riches in the world. But you need to bow down before me. Be careful with the proposals. The proposal in order for you to bow down before the enemy and lose your soul. But God brought you here to this place because God wants to save your soul. The Lord also has shown a woman that is on the path. She, she, if she is on the way, she is in Jesus because Jesus is the way. But on this walk towards eternity, she has heard thing that has caused her to look backwards. Look, be careful with your past. The, the wife a lot looked back and was left behind. They were leaving the destruction in order to be saved, but when she looked behind, she was ended up being left behind. And now in Philippians, Apostle Paul says, forgetting the things that are left behind, go towards a vocation which is Christ in us, hope of glory. And whoever is in Christ, my sister, his new creation, everything has become new, the old thing has, has have passed. Don't keep looking to the past because you're going to be left in the past. You're going to lose the blessing the Lord has for our life. If you are on the way, don't look to the right or to the left. Because if you look, you're going to fall. If you look behind, you're going to be left behind. The Lord also has shown a couple that has dedicated their lives to their children. And tonight they are feeling solitary because their children are no longer with them. The children abandoned them. But today they are going to be invited to begin a new phase in their lives. And if they do this, this is an invitation. If you accept the, the invitation, the Lord is showing that you no longer feel alone because the Lord will be with you every day of our lives because it's a promise from God I am with you every day until the end of the centuries one of the name of Jesus is Emmanuel which means God with us the Lord also, the Lord also has shown that during the service a man heard a sound of thunders every time he heard a, a thunder he was scared because he was a king. He was thinking that this thunders would lead to death. But he, at the end of the service, he realized that the thunders, they were just an alert. That he should not be afraid, but he could understand the plan and the project of God for his life. The Lord speaks through thunders. In relations, he, he speaks about this. I heard a, uh, a voice like many a waters, a voice like thunder that said, The Lord Almighty, hello, hallelujah, the Lord Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and glorify because the wedding of the Lamb is coming and the bride has already gotten ready. The signs in heaven are showing, revealing that the Lord Jesus is returning and the Lord wants you to be part of this project. Amen. Uh, let's stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification. Lord, glorify, we can feel the presence of the Lord. Lord, because we need a miracle in our lives. A miracle of being able to say no to this world, to live a life in sanctity with you. Give you glory, because not deserve it. But your grace has been able to reach our lives. Bless you. Be your name. For everything in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. We praise the Lord, glorify. We are thankful for this moment of fellowship, for everything that I have done and in our behalf and to our benefit. For the privilege, Lord, of being once again in your house, into your presence, because we know, Lord, that one day we're going to be with you in your eternity. That's be your name, Lord. I plead, Lord, to your people, to your church, for a week of uh, blessings and that you may protect us from any evil, heal the, the sick and open doors to your children, answer to all their needs, hide them from the snare of the enemy, preserve their lives and life and their salvation and their fellowship and take them uh, to their home in peace in the name of Jesus and we ask that in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of our good and eternal Father and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. The service is over. We're going to tell you my my youth my brother and sister who is with us. We have we are welcome to this place. We have service every Thursday at day, Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. We have a service, evangelization. We have a service geared to the, the women on Saturday at 6 p.m. On Sunday morning at 10.30, we have Sunday school. At night, once again, we have at 7.30, we have a service of glorification of the Lord. You, my brother and sister, are invited to participate. More especially, we're going to have an event here at the church with the youth, which is going to be at 8 of the night. And the message geared towards the youth, because we have the youth, I'm reminding the church that we have the, the week of consecration, fasting from 0 to 9 or 5 until the end of the service. And tomorrow we're going to have this event where it's going to be transmitted from the church of Pompon to the other church here in the state of Florida. Praise group is invited to participate. And you, my brother and sister, whoever else besides the youth can participate on this meeting, this gathering tomorrow at 8. If you need a pray for real life, clarification regarding the message, we are here at your disposal and I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. See?